Welcome back fellow coders, Jared O'Leary here with Boot Up. In this video, I want to show you how you can actually switch between multiple rooms in a project. So for example, in the virtual museum project that I've got, we've got a lobby right here, and we can go to different rooms, the Northern Arapaho room and the Eastern Shoshone room. So when I click on one of these, it will move to that room and display specific artifacts for that particular room. So for example, these are all Shoshone artifacts. I can go back and then go to the Northern Arapaho room and it will display different artifacts created by actually members of the Wind River Reservation. Okay. So only the Shoshone artifacts appear in the Shoshone room, only the Arapaho artifacts appear in the Arapaho room, and then none of them appear in the lobby. So let's take a look at how to do that. All right, so I've set up an example project right here. So the example project has three different buttons that currently don't do anything. It has two different artifacts. So one of them is the Shoshone roach, and then it has the Arapaho moccasins right here. I've also got it so that there are three different backdrops, and I've just made it easy to see which one is which by just giving it a name and putting a costume on here, okay? So that's how my project is set up. So the very first thing that we wanna do is we want to use event blocks to make it so that when the backdrop switches to a specific backdrop, we're going to make it hide. Whoops, and I need to do this, by the way, in the sprites that I want to hide, not the buttons. My bad. Okay, so we want it to hide when it switches to a specific backdrop. In this case, we want them both to hide in the lobby. So for this one, I'm going to just drag it on top of here and say, okay, so both of these will hide on the lobby. And the Arapaho one will hide on the Shoshone backdrop. And the Shoshone artifact will hide on the Arapaho backdrop, okay? So that's gonna make it so that they hide. So this code works well. But now we also need to make it so that it shows on a specific backdrop. So for example, on the Shoshone artifact, we want it to show when it switches to the Shoshone. And then we want it to show on the Arapaho. I just dropped it onto it. It just kind of saves the code onto it when it switches to Arapaho. Okay, so this is cool. But right now our, our project's not gonna work because we don't actually have functioning buttons. So we need to actually fix that. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that event, bo event block. I can't speak this morning. And I'm gonna say when this Arapaho button is clicked, we want to switch it to a backdrop, the Arapaho back backdrop. So when it clicks, it switches to Arapaho. On the lobby, I'm gonna drop this code onto there. I want it to switch to the lobby. And then on the Shoshone backdrop, or the Shoshone button, can't speak, we're going to have it switch to Shoshone. Okay, so each one of these has the same code. It's just switching to a different backdrop, but the same two blocks. And then we have the same code here. It just has different backdrops that it's gonna switch to. So let's test this out to see if this works. So if we are in the Arapaho, I can go to the lobby. Cool, none of these sprites are appearing. That's awesome. If I go to Shoshone, we have the Shoshone Roach, and we can go to the Arapaho one, and it'll take us to the moccasins. This is great. Now, the only thing that we need to actually add into here is a starting location. So what I'd recommend doing for like these global things that happen across all the different sprites is you can actually just put it inside of the stage. So for example, when the green flag is clicked, we want to switch the backdrop to the lobby. So now when we start our project, we are in the lobby, just like in the virtual museum that I showed you at the beginning, and we can switch between the different backdrops. And then when we go back to the green flag, it takes us back into the lobby. Okay, so this project works great now, but there's a lot of other really cool things that you could do. So for example, maybe you'll make this button change if your mouse is hovering over it, or maybe you'll make it so that when you click on it, it will like make it go smaller, then get bigger, or maybe make a sound, etc. So there's a lot of really neat things that you can add to this, but I just wanted to show you a very quick tip to how to switch between different rooms. Oh, and by the way, if you don't wanna use buttons, you could actually use the arrow keys and say something like, when the up arrow key is pressed, go to the lobby. And basically it'll just switch the backdrop. Okay, so that's another way that you can do it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know something that you learned or created in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe, 
like, and check out the links in the description for even more free resources, such as videos, free lesson plans, and our podcast.